Welcome back. Now, before we went on break, we posed the question. If Wambuge Ugandesis, also known as Muthiga, has such huge benefits, why aren't people taking care of it? Well, we talked to Jonathan Muriki of ICRAF, who has been working with farmers all over the country trying to find out ways of domesticating Wambugia. Welcome to part two of Mazingira Mtaani. Muthiga, also known scientifically as Wambugia Ugandesis, has been growing in the wild for many years. So why so much interest now? Malaria is a key, it's a key disease. And malaria is one of the diseases that is making us work on Wambugia more because you know malaria is killing so many people and there's been a lot of resistance uh, by the pathogen of malaria to the, the conventional medicine that is known. Now there's only one, one plant that is one method of treatment of malaria that is remaining, that is the use of ACTs and we want to be able to avail alternatives that can help people in case even resistance develops for this. The tree can be intercropped. Karuki says that the uptake by farmers is now growing. Science can produce very good quality trees, which are able to produce better than what farmers have on farms. But if those trees are not produced in the right way in nurseries, then they are not able to produce up to the potential that we think the jamplasim is able to produce too. Currently, ICRAF is working with farmers here to research on ways that this tree can be planted on farms. When we came here, farmers said those farmers that were old, like the herbalists that we talked to before, were aware of this species called Wabugia. And they were aware of the benefits of the species, but the species was not in the forest, the species was not in farms. And we asked them, why is it that you guys do not plant these species on farms? And they said, we cannot even find mother trees. And so you find that even for many species that we work with, it is very difficult for farmers to be able to identify good mother trees because most of the trees have been cut in the forests and they have been removed either for timber or for other things. And they say this is a very good species. We would like to plant it, but we cannot identify good mother trees for it. So we gave some of the trees that we had to the farmers to plant in their farms and they kept on asking, so what's going to happen to the future generations that may also want trees to plant in their farms and will not be able to supply? Working with farmers from the initial stages of research is key if such projects have to succeed. Now you can see we're in the site of a nursery and they were not able to get these seeds. So we agreed to set up a tree seed orchard together with them. At four to five years, the Muthiga tree can be harvested for medicine and seeds. Domesticating this tree has other challenges as well. Okay, domestication of trees, indigenous trees in particular, is uh, challenging because you're moving a tree from a natural ecosystem into a farming ecosystem. And that brings a lot of dynamics in it. For example, you've seen with this plant the, the worms that are eating the seeds. When the worms eat the seeds, when our main challenge is seed production, then that presents a major challenge. Other challenges include poor seed storage by farmers as well wrong perception by farmers that exotic species are better than indigenous species as they grow faster and have a lot of market. Karaoke says that media, being a key player in the economic growth of a country, it has the duty to report science findings simply and in ways that farmers can understand. Especially in issues of climate change and everything, we are encouraging people to plant more of indigenous species. And uh, the major challenge again is the uh, passing of information by our partners because we write all this information that we find in our research as publications. Especially we have written a lot of information about Wabugia in particular, about its medicinal components, about its growth rates and propagations, and most of this information is getting really repackaged. We have a challenge to package it in small um, and simple to read inform uh, information booklets that farmers can understand. And that's where the media also comes in because once you see what is happening with us here, you can digest it in ways that farmers can get it. We have seen a lot of potential when uh, media has done that and farmers have responded very well. With such growing attention, experts are sounding the alarm, saying the tree could become extinct soon unless measures are taken to stem over exploitation. The truth is that as herbal medicine is becoming more and more in demand because one, uh, the quality of herbal medicine, as we had before, is, is improving. Such trees like Wabugia, Prunas and um, Olea, which are producing a lot, uh, they are being used in treating a lot of diseases, are the ones that everybody wants to produce from. In addition to threats from those tripping its back, which is the most potent part of the tree for sale to herbalists, it is a source of firewood and charcoal. 
This has put pressure on tree populations in the wild. So to us, Wabugia, whose propagation methodologies are not quite developed, is more of a priority to us. You know that trying to look at the genetic diversity, ways to develop propagation, and be able to avail it in the next five to ten years to, to, the, to, the, to the farming populations and then conserve it on farm. Nonetheless, the tree remains popular in herbal medicine in the region. Besides Mr. Nduiga's clients, who are largely the rural populace, extracts from the tree are making their way into urban centers in major supermarkets across East Africa. If you look at the market development for Wabugia Sarutaris, which is in South Africa, which has gone into the international market, if that do happen for Wabugia Yugadensis, then our farmers start to benefit. The benefits of this tree may seem far-fetched, but not for Jonah Mugwana, a former government accountant in Meru, also in Kenya's eastern province. He has gone into the commercial production of Wambugia products, even though on small scale. Manufairi ambao ni meisha pata kutokana na hiyo kazi na enderea na hiyo, imenisaindia sana kupata hiyo pesa, nikasomesha watoto wangu, wengine wameenda university, pako wakati huu, na hata na nyumbani hapa, na kupa na mapato masuri ya kujisaindia. He works with over 15 other members of his group to produce various products from Wambugia. Kutokana na hii murandi, tumepata kama mwaka huu, tumepata kama elfu amsini hivi. Hile faida, baanda kutuwa matumisi, diyo hiyo kitoko ambayo tumeisha pata. Kwa hivyo, diyo nikuwa nasema waisan, ambayo tukipata usaindisi. Hata tuliomba runi, lakini vandu watu japatiwa, diyo tuwese kuwa na na large scale production. Without a factory, the group hires grinders and transports the powder to Nairobi 200 kilometers away for packaging and labeling. Though Kenya is yet to set up its own factory to manufacture the herb, parts of Mount Elgon are said to provide raw material for processors in the nearby Uganda. We already have two processors, two commercial processors, and I think that is the link. And I do suspect, though it's not been proved, Part of the process uh, material is also coming from Mount Elgo on our side. But I, I don't know. But they, t they did tell me the, the people who were just trying to talk about preliminaries, so they could not give you the proper information. They were also getting it as far. All the, the forests that are close to towns, like Kampara, we know there's a Mavera forest. Mavera is very difficult to get a, a grown up, I mean, an old Wabugia tree. It's actually under protection with the guns. This is how they look in their natural state if conserved well. The tree has one of the best timber and all its parts can be used differently. None of it goes to waste. Partnerships, especially with government and policymakers, is very important. Another thing, especially with the market, is trying to find ways in which uh, governments can help us minimize the access to wild populations. For example, when the forests were closed for timber trees, uh, 10 years ago, we have seen a lot of market demand coming into the farms. And therefore, if this can happen also for medicinal trees especially, we can see demand coming into the farms, and this can raise the growth of uh, the growing of these trees. Being an evergreen tree, it can supply the international market with raw material for various medicinal ingredients and bring revenue to individuals and the country at large. All that needs to be done is more sensitization on its domestication and preservation, as well as seed propagation to make available the seedlings. But it's also about encouraging farmers to go into this field sustainably and empowering them to market the products. Thanks for watching Mazingira 24. Next week we'll bring you more informative stories from the arid and semi-arid lands of Kenya, also known as the Asal areas. Mazingira 24 airs every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Once again, we appreciate you, the viewer. We would like to highlight your story. So do SMSs on 2101 starting with the word Mazingira. Thanks for watching. For Mazingira 24, I'm Violet Otindo.